they realized they were dealing with a maniac. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel if you've not been here before. Uh, my name is Gareth and this is Book Songs and Love and Magic. And I'm going to do a wrap up for October 2023. October 2023. Can't believe it's October already. Well, November already because um, that's when this is going up. So, yeah, it's been an interesting month. It's been a themed month. So, obviously, spooky season and all that. Um, so, there's been some videos that relate to that. And there's been the Occult Detective October, which I was um, very pleased to be a co-host of. So I came into the co-hosting of that event quite um, naively. I didn't, didn't know that many examples. I knew some of the famous examples, but um, I was definitely helped out by the other co-hosts. And uh, it was a really good event. And uh, uh, it, was, it was created by MJ at Reading This Life. And there was loads and loads of other co-hosts. And uh, it was a really good event, so hopefully it'll be done next year as well. But there'll be references to that event throughout this video. And uh, I did some more on the Starathon, which I'm also co-hosting. But let's just talk about um, a couple of stats before we talk about the videos I've done. So I've now read 74 books this year, according to Goodreads. And that's gone beyond my challenge of 70. Uh, so it's quite cool in a way. Although part of the reason why I've got gone above the challenge is that uh, I haven't written anything which I thought I was going to struggle to do the challenge this year because I thought I was going to write the next novel which is a bit of a shame so in some ways you know I'm reading which is good but in other ways it would have been quite nice if, if I was struggling to reach that number because of writing so there we are that's not happened but I've read 74 books anyway and uh, looking at the channel a massive thing happened this month and I went above a thousand subscribers so um, I celebrated with a big five hour live stream with lots of guests and it was it was a wonderful time very grateful for the guests that came on and uh, including my daughter who was very nervous about doing a live stream but I think she enjoyed it and uh, yeah I've now got 1023 which is great so it's still building which is wonderful so thank you a lot for that uh, but it was wonderful to see that happen and it actually happened during another live stream so I was doing a live stream with MJ at Reading This Life and that was really cool and it's a nice kind of moment of excitement when she looked at her phone and said, Gareth, you've just reached a 1,000. So uh, that was really awesome. That was a really good chat as well. That was a four-hour chat as well. So some marathon live streams in the last couple of weeks. Um, so, uh, and, and looking at the that side of the analytics, which I don't normally look at, but I looked at it because I went over a 1,000 subscribers, I actually looked at my analytics for the first time. And uh, according to that, there's been 3,725 hours of viewing, which is pretty cool. So, um, again, thanks for that. Um, and uh, let's talk about what videos I've filmed. So I started off this month with the afternoon tea book tag. And that's when I literally held up a big bag of tea bags, um, Tetley tea. And I talked about my mug with me and Kermit playing together. And, uh, and it was quite a nice tag that I just found online and just did that version. The, my version. I did a a video that um, seemed to get quite a nice response, which was about pace and structure in novels, and whether or not um, you want to be pulled in straight away, or whether you like slow burns and that kind of thing. Um, so that was quite a nice video to get some um, feedback from. Um, there's also there was a bit more panic poetry for Pax. Um, I did a little short video about the fact that I was starting to read the saga comics so I'm going to talk about that in a minute um, I did a the Q4 the fourth quarter to TBR kind of thing possibilities video for the Historathon so that was a really cool thing to do and I'm going to be looking at that kind of thing in November a lot and uh, I did the uh, science fiction film book tag sorry booktube tag science fiction film booktube tag <clears throat> which was a lot of fun I really enjoyed doing that one um, and that was from Man with a Happy Reads uh, and uh, I did my 12 book TBRs. So it was like my version of what Michael K. Vaughan and a couple of other people had done where they talked about some some 12 books they're going to read next. And uh, and it's quite interesting because I've already um, forgotten about some of that video when I did another video that kind of contradicted it a little bit. But it's, it's a nice thing to refer back to because those are books I really do want to read very quickly. So uh, that 12 book TBR was quite an interesting video to do. And uh, one of them that's in that video started now, actually, um, for this month. 
and uh, I did the booktube watching tag as well. So again, that was a nice one to do because it was talking about other booktubers. And it was a nice chance to shout out lots of booktubers that I've watched over the years. Um, some of them um, YouTubers rather than booktubers as well. And some of the sort of longstanding stuff like, um, you know, one of the first ones I got into was Mealy Death Cult. So it was good to talk about Moid again. And uh, just in general, talk about some of the friends I've made as well. So booktube watch, watching tag was a really fun one to do. Uh, shortly after that, I did the Stephen King, uh, King of Horror, Stephen King tag, which was uh, created um, by Jess Book Girl TV, and uh, that was a really fun one to do. And it was nice to talk about Stephen King again. Um, there's a, there's a, a couple of Stephen King videos this month, which I'll get to in a second. But that was a really nice one to do. And uh, in, I'd done that while I got all of my Stephen King books out as well. So I've actually got sixty Stephen King books. So. I did a video about that as well, which you won't see that until next year. But uh, it was nice to see what I did have. And I was picking some of those out for the for the tag and that, which was good. Um, I announced my event, which I was really keen for people to get involved in if they want to. And a few people have already said they're going to get involved in it, which is lovely, which is the Winter of Wyndham. So celebrating John Wyndham, uh, author of um, Day of the Triffids, Midwich Cuckoos, The Chrysalids, uh, Trouble with Lycan, Crack and Wakes, Chocky, uh, lots of lots of books like that. And I did a little video about him and what I might read and just talked a little bit about some of his books. So that was a really nice thing to put up and I'm really looking forward to reading some John Wyndham in the winter. <laughs> so December, January, February and um, I'm really pleased that a few people have got behind that because I think he's a great author. So it's nice to celebrate him. So that was really nice. I did a book that's got that had a couple of reaction videos, which was my books, my my book, uh, my video on physical books. So it was a video that wasn't didn't in, I wasn't intending to trash ebooks and say you know because some people say yeah but I like them for this reason I absolutely get it and there's lots of reasons why ebooks are brilliant and you know lots of people said that it's really good for their eyesight because they haven't got as good an eyesight anymore and I'm sure I would love ebooks for that reason at some point because my eyes are bound to go at some point. So, you know, I didn't intend to just that, but I felt like so many people had said that kind of thing in, in videos about the the advantages of ebooks that I, I felt like I wanted to do this extra point that I didn't think was being made. So what I could have done is talked about those things first and then said, but in addition to that, I wanted to say this. So it looked like I wasn't being positive at all about ebooks, which I didn't mean to do because I don't read ebooks, but I totally get why people do. So um, so anyway, um, it, was, it was nice to see some of the reaction videos and they were very respectful and lovely and all that and, and very um, uh, complimentary in places and all that, which is lovely. Uh, but I just wanted to talk about the physicality of books and, and, and how uh, the specific book is tied in with your relationship with the story. Um, so if someone had a different edition in their hand um, or even just a different copy of the same edition, that's... A different book so that's kind of what I was trying to get at um, and I and it wasn't a nostalgia thing because one because the book I started with was the book that I was currently reading which I'd spent ages reading because I kept falling asleep and I'll talk about it in a minute but yeah there's one book that took me ages and it wasn't a particularly long book and then I did uh, a video which was the epilogue for my big unhaul so there's actually 10 videos about my big unhaul, which I when I got rid of 300 books, um, so about uh, was it eight or nine boxes full, um, and that is going to be followed um, this month by um, the, the the proper start of the uh, library tour because I got all the books out and all those books that I kept, I was showing you what I had, so I thought I might as well continue with that and and do some themed videos about that. So. So that epilogue was really um, fun to do because I was just talking about what kind of collection I'd want, what kind of book collection I was going to have now because I'd changed my attitude a little bit and I wasn't trying to have the, the greatest collection ever but just what I, what I felt I needed to keep. So it was a different kind of approach to having a book collection. And then I did my top five Stephen King books. So that was definitely for Halloween and uh, I really enjoyed doing that. So I, ha I had done a Stephen King book, sorry, I had done a Stephen King video a while back, probably about 18 months ago or something, but it was nice to do another one and talk about how I currently felt about my favourite Stephen King books. Um, 
I can't see what that says. Oh, yeah. So I also put up a review of the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. And I really enjoyed that book. So if you're curious to know what I felt like in detail, then there's a special video on that book. Uh, but I'll talk about it in a minute as well. But uh, yeah, so I did that book review video. And then I did the I did my announcement of my take on the Read What Your Own Challenge. So after me saying in videos that I couldn't do it, that I respected the idea of it and I really wish I could do it, but I couldn't do it because it wasn't a pleasurable experience last time, I came up with a way of doing it that I thought would work, that would suit me and would still be completely in the spirit of concentrating on what you had and not buying any books for a while. So, uh, so that one went up and uh, yeah, I was quite pleased with that. So um, that's where I am at the moment as far as buying books and all that sort of stuff. So <clears throat> let's have a look at what I've read. As I said, it was um, Occult Detective October. So the first thing I read was a gift uh, from Roy, from Roy Reads Anything. So this is a really lovely thing that he gave me, which is uh, The Secrets of Dr. Taverner. Uh, Taverner? Taverner. Taverner. I'm going to say Taverner. The Secrets of Dr. Taverner. Uh, and um, this is by Dion Fortune. And this is a, like an old example of occult detective fiction. And I really enjoyed it. They were like little short stories. They're like, like little vignettes, little cases. And uh, it was just a really nice book. I really enjoyed it. So it was a bit of a surprise. Didn't know what I was going to think. And uh, really appreciate getting, giving it. He sent me this and a couple of other things. And uh, I haven't got to the other things yet, to be fair. I've run out of time in the, the, the month, but I'm going to try and read them before the end of the year. But this was really cool. So, yeah, a nice way to start the month and a nice way to start the event. The Secrets of Dr. Dr. Taverner by Dion Fortune. Awesome. Thanks, Roy. Then I put the uh, Occult Detective October aside for a second and started the saga books. So um, I found these quite cheap. Um, so I, yeah, it was £1.50 I found them. So I bought these first two copies and, and I'd heard about them for years and I thought I'd give them a go. And I really enjoyed them. I thought they were really good fun and really different and um it gave me a little bit of Farscapey vibes, which is probably why I loved it so much. But it looked like there was going to be this ever-expanding um, universe being created by Brian K. Vaughan, the author. And I liked the artwork, and I just thought it was just a really cool uh, example of really interesting um, graphic novel stuff with a, with a kind of a big sort of epic plot. And... Uh, uh, yeah, it's just, I'm really intrigued. So I'm looking forward to reading the rest of it. And I'm going to read the rest of it. I'm going to try and aim to buy one a month next year. So I'm going to buy, so I need to get the third one. I did have the third one lent, lent out library, but I put it back for some reason. So I still need to get the third one. But the first two, really liked them. Uh, so um, that was a nice new thing for me to read. And then I read something that was very special for me. And I went and splashed out on them. And they are in the, the original five, uh, five separate comic editions, um, but you can get it as one big trade paperback graphic novel. And that's Han Ellison's original treatment, original script of the City on the Edge of Forever, which is the Star Trek episode he wrote, which is one of the most popular episodes where um, they go back in time and basically... Captain Kirk's got a big dilemma that is going to is really upsetting him through the episode, and uh, it's it's really good. It's really interesting. This is because there's lots, lots there's some differences in it that are quite uh, significant differences that kind of challenge Gene Roddenberry's attitude to Star Trek, and it's a little darker. And I think it probably would have been fine now, but because Gene Roddenberry had quite a, uh, a very specific idea of what the, what his future was he wanted his future to be um he didn't like um what some of the, some of these elements in Harlan Ellison's story so he got them changed so Harlan Ellison famously wasn't very pleased about that but he wouldn't be very pleased with anything like that so it makes sense um and uh it was just a really really cool read uh so that was nice to have and uh, the artwork's brilliant the artwork is absolutely brilliant so uh so yeah that was a really nice 
addition to my reading this month. And then I went back to the Occult Detective October event and read Broken Homes, which is number four in the Rivers of London series. And uh, it was a funny one, this one, because about halfway through I thought, oh, this is nowhere near as good as the others. And then it started picking up. And then the, the last sort of quarter of the book was really good. And it really made up for what I felt was a little bit meandering and not quite as tense and gripping as the other books. Uh, so it did definitely made up for it. So uh, for me, the series hasn't had a weak spot. And uh, I'm going to read book five soon. Um, so, yeah, really cool. I really enjoyed it. So it was nice to come back to it. And, and the occult Detective October um, gave me that excuse because it's literally about a... Uh, a police constable who is a wizard and is well, like a, an apprentice training wizard who's part of a department in the police force that deals with the occult. So, yeah, it fits it fits it really well. And it was good it, um, and uh, had quite an emotional punch uh, at the end of it as well. So, yeah, so that was that one. And then I read... The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, which is a fantastic book. I really enjoyed it. It's my first Grady Hendrix book, and it was really nice to get so much pleasure out of it. It was also read during my half term, so I spent an entire day um, just stuck on the book, which is really nice. I love it when I can do that. So I read 350 pages in one go, which is also a testament to how good it is because I didn't want to put it down. And then I read the last 50 pages on the train to... Bogner, I think it was. Um, yeah, it's really, really good. I did a full book review of this as well for Halloween. So if you're curious to know more about what I thought about it and why I liked it, then have a look at that video. But yeah, it was really good, I thought. Um, and I really definitely like the way Grady Hendrix writes and I can't re wait to read more by him. Okay. Uh, a few things to finish. So I... Also, finished the third book um, of my Ray Bradbury deep dive. So this is a reread. I've read this a few times. But this time I did it knowing that I was going to make a video about the book. And um, there's, a, there's a video about this book coming up on the channel very soon. And uh, it's my, f my third video in the Ray Bradbury deep dive. And it's one of his best collections. I, I just absolutely love it. So it's nice to read it again. And... Uh, yeah, if you know the October Country, then you'll know why I was praising it. Such a good book. It's definitely one of the books. There's, there's about four or five books you could recommend to people new to Ray Bradbury, but this is definitely one of them, I think. Um, so, And it's obviously got a bit of a Halloween vibe to it because it's one of his... Well, it is probably the, the short story collection that is more... Um, what was Rosie? Uh, that's more uh, linked to the Halloween uh, spooky season vibe. What's the matter? What happened? What happened, Rosie? Well, I don't really understand purring. You have to speak more eloquently. And then I read Bad Dolls by Rachel Harrison. And Bad Dolls by Rachel Harrison is four short stories. It's a very short book. Um, and the way that the print is on the page, uh, it's a very quick read anyway. So, yeah, it's a very... Uh, Short, short book of short, short stories. Uh, it's four stories, four dark tales. Uh, and it is good. I, I liked it. I gave it quite a good rating on Goodreads. I think it's, I like the way she writes. I think um, out of the four stories, there's one in particular I definitely liked. The one called Bad Dolls, I was really disappointed with the ending because there was lots of ominous stuff happening, but it kind of just stayed just ominous. Um, so I thought that was a little bit of a shame. But the one called Goblin was the one that I liked the most. I thought it was a really interesting take on um, a, a very... Um, uh, dramatic diet that this woman goes on. So, so yeah, Goblin was good. And there was a really interesting one called The Bachelorette, which, again, I, I, was, I thought it was going to get really dark and nasty and horrible and, and didn't quite go there, but I thought the concept was really good. And I did like the I do like the way she writes. So I am going to look more into her Rachel Harrison. She's written other things as well. So I'm not that won't be the last thing I read by her. But uh, 
yeah, that was another thing I read for the month. And then all the way through the month, I've been reading this, which is uh, issue 10 of the Occult Detective magazine. And it's really good. There's a really cool um, article by MJ from Reading This Life, which is really nice to read, which is when she's reviewing the Satan Sleuth books. Um, the stories in there are good. Um, there's a quite an interesting one called Dicing with Death, a, a, a uh, an article called Dicing with Death, and uh, and that's really good about RPGs. Um, but yeah, it's just that the whole thing is really good, and it's nice to put together. I definitely recommend it. Um, I enjoyed that story, uh, Sins of the Werewolf, but I love werewolf stuff, um, and just in general though, the whole thing was really good. Is really interesting. Um, so, yeah, um, it was nice to, to get this. Definitely recommend it. So, um, some full of lots of good fiction and a few different articles in there um, that... Um, oh, there was one, actually, that was also really good, which was about representation in the occult detective genre and how things have changed now. And where how it began kind of lent itself to kind of old fashioned archetypes and old fashioned devices and stories that uh, would have um, been now been updated. So it's not quite as old fashioned the occult detective um, genre as a whole. So that was a really good article as well. So yeah, occult, occult detective magazine definitely check it out. Get one online. Um, support a magazine, an independent magazine that needs your support because it's really good. So there we are, so that's the October done. So November is gonna be filled with nonfiction and it's gonna be filled with um, some other things like some things that, like Dead Silence, I'm, I'm gonna read that. I think it's called Dead Silence. Is it called Dead Silence? I think it's called Dead Silence. Uh, and a couple of other bits. But anyway, I'll tell you all about that next month. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks so much for the support. This month has been a lovely month for the channel because of the thousand subscribers, uh, um, what's the word, um, what's the word? Um, moment, <laughs> that wasn't the word I was looking for, but um, milestone, that's it, milestone. So thanks for that. And uh, just in general, it's been great, like doing live streams with people and I'm going to do more of those, by the way. I've really enjoyed them and getting all those guests in and, and for the first time being in control of bringing guests in and out was quite fun. Uh, so I'm going to do more of that. And there's a couple of things I've got in mind. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But in the meantime, thank you so much. Uh, please comment below on the stuff I've, I've talked about that I've read and tell me what you think about that stuff. And I'll speak to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye. Picture of what it's like to be